childlike imagination, child prodigies, child geniuses, and late blooming geniuses, as well as the pitfalls of being a child prodigy and the challenges of being gifted. There's a lot to cover in this session. To set a framework for our first lesson, let me begin by referencing two opposing points of view. I ask you to consider which you believe, which might be a better way of stimulating innovation and creativity. Here is reference one. A biblical reference from the New Testament, 1 Corinthians. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Here's reference two, the poetic. Actually, there are two quotes here. The first from British novelist Aldous Huxley. The secret of genius is to carry the spirit of a child into old age, end quote. But Huxley's words seem to have been borrowed from those of young French poet Arthur Rimbaud, who said, quote, genius is the recovery of childhood at will. Well, which of these worldviews, the biblical one or the poetic one, is better? Or at least which worldview should be encouraged if creativity is the goal? I think you know where I'm heading with this. The aim of this and the next segments is to ask you to consider the possibility that genius really is, as the poet Rimbaud said, the recovery of childhood at will. I now have seven grandchildren, and it's fascinating to watch them as they develop. But grandparent or not, I think we would all agree that children have both fantastic and fantastical imaginations. Indeed, during the earliest years, a child seems to have more difficulty separating out the imaginative from the representational. At what age does a child realize that Count Dracula or Cookie Monster in the Sesame Street show are not real? When does a child begin to differentiate a smiling clown on TV from their smiling heavily made up Nana on a FaceTime call? When does the world that the child imagines give way to what we call reality? When does adult reality begin to crowd out the imaginative world of the child? We, myself included, when I was parenting, well, we say to our children, even to our young adolescents, oh, grow up or get real. Is that a good idea? Is it possible that reality grows at the expense of, consumes imagination and potential creativity? Is it possible that we parents, often simply trying to fashion law and order from chaos, gradually and unconsciously erect barriers that constrict the curiosity and imagination of children? Do we gradually imprison their imaginative thoughts inside the limiting framework of our own mindset, our own mental box? When I suggest that rapper Kanye West is a genius, it's in part because as a rapper poet like Arthur Rimbaud, he understands that the secret to genius may lie in the capacity to recover childhood at will. This is precisely what West says in his 2010 single, Power. As a creative force, he's terrified by the prospect of losing his power to be imaginative. Let me quote this passage. My childlike creativity, purity, and honesty is honestly being crowded by these grown thoughts. Reality is catching up with me. Taking my inner child, I'm fighting for custody. End quote. Is it a good thing to think like a child into adulthood and even old age? So it would seem because the ability to retain a childlike imagination may be the key to future innovation. At least this is the theory of the late Harvard evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould. In the quote on the screen, you see Gould's reference to the word neoteny. It's a great word to know, neoteny, the retention of juvenile traits in human adults, a species-preserving habit so deeply ingrained as to be almost entirely unknown. 
Here's what Gould said in a 1979 article titled, A Biological Homage to Mickey Mouse. Quote, humans are neotenic, tough word to say, neotenic. We have evolved by retaining into adulthood the originally juvenile features of our ancestors. We have very long periods of gestation, markedly extended childhoods, and the longest lifespan of any mammal. The morphological features of eternal youth have served us well. End quote. Again, Stephen Jay Gould from his article titled, A Biological Homage to a Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse, of course, was the creation of Walt Disney, who said the following about childlike imagination. Quote, Every child is born blessed with a vivid imagination. But just as a muscle grows flabby with disuse, so the brightest imagination of a child pales in later years if he ceases to exercise it, end quote. How did Walt Disney continue to exercise his youthful creative imagination as an adult? By making films such as Peter Pan, Snow White, Fantasia, Dumbo, Cinderella, and Mary Poppins. Disney said, quote, I do not make films primarily for children. I make them for the child in all of us, whether we be six or 60, end quote. What other geniuses throughout history were gifted with neoteny, the capacity to retain a childlike imagination into adulthood? Let me choose just three, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Pablo Picasso, and Albert Einstein. You may know Mozart through the highly entertaining film Amadeus, which never seems to age. But if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. And don't just take my word for it. It won eight Academy Awards. Allow me to show you just a clip of the film that depicts the zany, childlike mentality of Mozart. And yes, indeed, he could really play the piano upside down when he was having fun, literally just playing around. I'm tired of this game. I don't want to play anymore. But my penalty! I've got to have a penalty! <laughs> Okay, good clean fun, but as great as Amadeus is, it failed to see the real point. Yes, Mozart was a childlike goofball, but he was not merely an idiot savant. Yes, he was sometimes childish in his behavior, but perpetuating a childlike mentality was one of the keys to his creative greatness. There are many stories about Mozart and his childlike mentality, but here's my favorite. In 1787, Mozart and his entourage are traveling in a coach in a long trip from Vienna to Prague. Mozart is bored, so to while away the time, he thinks up imaginary names for all of his traveling companions. This is what Mozart says in a letter to a friend. Quote, we invented names for ourselves on the journey. Here they are. I'm Punkiti Titi. My wife is Shabba Pumpha. Hoffer is Grozka Pump. 
Stadler is Nadashinibichi. My servant Joseph is Sagadarata. My dog Glaukaro is Shemanowski. And on and on it goes. Now this reminds me of our daughter who, as a four-year-old, had imaginary friends in an imaginary world. A four-year-old. Okay, fair enough. But Mozart was not four. He was 31 when he wrote this letter. Earlier, when Mozart was a child, about age six or seven, he created a magic kingdom that he called the Kingdom of Back, in which everyone had to walk backward and talk backward. When he was 35, he created another magic kingdom, the one for his opera, The Magic Flute which he populated not only with a magical flute, but also a sorcerer, dragons, magical birds, and the like. Within three months of the premiere of the magic flute, Mozart was dead, having died suddenly of kidney failure and attending myocarditis. Thus, this magical, childlike opera proved to be his last. A year after his death in 1792, Mozart's sister, Nannerl, said of him, quote, apart from his music, he was almost always a child, and thus he remained, end quote. And to this day, we are the beneficiaries. Pablo Picasso had a lot to say about youth and genius, aphorisms, quote, it takes a very long time to become young, he said, end quote. When I was young, I could draw like Raphael, but it took me a lifetime to learn to draw like a child. And finally, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. But in the next passage, Picasso offers a fuller and deeper explanation of the relationship between childlike thinking and genius. Picasso said, what one can consider an early genius is actually the genius of childhood. It disappears at a certain age without leaving traces. It's possible that such a child will one day become an artist, but he will have to begin again at the beginning. I did not have this genius, for example. My first drawings could not have been hung in a display of children's work. These pictures lacked the childlike or naivete, end quote. What did Picasso mean by this? They lacked the childlike, or naivete. Well, I'm not absolutely sure, but perhaps it involved removing things from paintings, like ornamentation and decoration and symbolism, things that you learn over time in schools and in art academies, and to revert to the basics. Which image is the work of a childlike mind? the one on the left or the one on the right? It's the one on the right. It's an image Picasso did when he was 11. The one on the left is that of 64-year-old child Picasso. We'd each have to think about why that image on the left is more childlike of the two. But clearly, the image on the left is related to the less representational, more imaginally, imaginatively playful image of the horse and bull that Picasso created three years later at age 67. Again, the decoration and symbolism learned in the academies have been removed. He has returned to basic line and form. Finally, Einstein. Throughout his life, Albert Einstein saw the world as a child, while at the same time keeping very adult scientific information in mind. At the age of five, Einstein became curious about the steady pointing of the needle of a compass, and from this sprang his childlike Fluch aus dem Wunder, as he said in the original German. Fluch aus dem Wunder, flight born of wonder. Eighty years later, Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb, said of Einstein, quote, there was always in him a powerful purity, at once childlike and profoundly stubborn, end quote. In 1921, Einstein himself wrote to a friend, quote, the pursuit of truth and beauty 
is a sphere of activity in which we are permitted to remain children all our lives, end quote. And finally, toward the end of his life, Einstein expressed it this way, quote, we never cease to stand like curious children before the great mystery into which we are born. What about the modern day? First, there's Rocket Man, Elon Musk, who compared youthful interns to experienced engineers. Said Musk, interns are great because they don't know what's impossible, end quote. Finally, Jeff Bezos, at the Genius Gala, at the Liberty Science Center in New Jersey in 2015. And that's a great place for young and old to go, by the way. I've been there several times with a grandchild. Here's what Jeff Bezos said, quote, you have to have a certain childlike ability to not be trapped in your expertise. And that fresh look, that beginner's mind, once you're an expert, it's unbelievably hard to maintain. But great inventors are always looking. And that same year, Bezos again said, quote, that ability to look at things with a fresh mind, a beginner's mind, is very useful for entrepreneurs, end quote. And finally, still Beth, Jeff Bezos, one last time, it's a gift if you can keep your childlike sense of wonder, and it helps with creativity. It helps to have fun. End quote. Creativity, fun, play. When I was a child, and supposedly practicing my pieces at the piano, but really just playing around and improvising, being creative, my concerned mother would yell out from the kitchen, quote, stop playing around and get back to work. Maybe what she should have called out was not get back to work, but rather, that's great. Have fun, be creative, keep playing, just keep on playing in both senses of the word. 